Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to, use, how to teach your horse to use a stick target. So this is little Zero here. He has just turned three and he doesn't know how to use a stick target. He knows a couple of other things and he definitely knows my system. So it will be quite quick for him to understand my communication because we've been communicating the same way since he was born. So it's a whole three years now he's onto it. I think zero. So this is the very beginning. You make your stick target, which I have a video on how to do that. If you want to find that, or I'll just give you a quick rundown. It's an old broomstick, not too old because you don't want splinters, an upside down water bottle stuck over the end of the stick and then you wrap it in tape to hold it solid. Now you'll notice that this one makes a few noises. It's only because I put some little stones in there, but it's because I use this one for my sheep as well. It's not what I use for the horses. Now Zero is, um, he loves doing um, training sessions. He just loves it. So which is good. It's good when you have a motivated horse. So I'm about to start with Zero and show you exactly how to do this from stage one. Good. You can see Zero, he was, he, he, I put this very, very close to his um, muzzle, which is this is where he needs to touch this part of the target. So what I do is I use his inquisitiveness. Good. He touches it. I say good when he touches it, and then I give him a biscuit. Good. And then I give him a biscuit. Now I know some of you will already be saying, how come that horse is already touching it? He literally doesn't know this. I have not ever done this with Zero, but what he does know is the system and he does know being inquisitive gets him places. So it's close to him. Good. So I keep it close to him so that we ensure success and not failure. Good. Because we're trying to get the message across to him that he needs to touch this, not hold it far away and have him walk over to it. All we want him to do is touch it. He's trying to touch good other things, which is usually what happens. There's a whole load of activity going on there, back up zero. He's getting a little bit too into me and into my space. So I move him away a little bit. Good. I put the target where I know he's going to touch it. Good. Even though he's trying to grab it, that's okay because he didn't. You can accept that a couple of times, but not if it becomes frequent. Good. Now what I'm not wanting him to do, back up, is get in my face. He is a little bit like that zero, so I do have to frequently remind him good to stay out of my space. I want at least this amount of room between me and him. I don't want him standing on top of me. So that's something you might need to be um, be <laughs> aware of, is that you don't want your horse to be in your space. He still needs to keep his distance. Good. So here you can see he's going straight for it, just because he kind of understands the system. Let's say your horse wasn't doing what Zero does. Let's say, because Zero has for three years known my system, so he's obviously you know, he's on to it. He knows that we have to do something and he's trying to work out what it is. If your horse didn't do what Zero did, you would literally go like this. <laughs> good. You would touch it on her, on your horse's muzzle. Say good and give him a biscuit. Good. I'm trying to beat him to it there. This is a horse that doesn't do what Zero is doing. I wait till he's not being silly because he does this silly head tilt thing sometimes because he's trying to yawn on cue. Off cue, I should say. Good. And I give him a biscuit. Remind him to get out of my space. Good. And I give him a biscuit. Now, there's something else that you need to be aware of too. You don't want them touching this bit, it's this bit. Good. Now, ideally at this point, I'm not really wanting him to move his feet. Good. It's just about touching it and moving his head to touch it. Good. Not, it's not at this point about moving his feet. Now the reason, even though that is something I will want him to do, um, 
it's not something you should do when you're at this stage of the training. Good. Because that's a different behavior. The behavior we're training right now is this. That's it. Good. It's not move your feet. This is where I, this, a lot of um, people go wrong is while they're training something, they're not being paying attention enough to see what else their horse is doing at the same time as the thing they want them to do. So Zero has touched it a couple of times and he's moved his feet forward. I don't want him to move his feet forward. I just want him to know, no, wherever this is. And in typical Zero form, he's going to try and grab it. Good. Now, you noticed I said good then, but I didn't give him a food reward. I still said good and he knows what good means. So I can reward it with the good, with the bridge, but I'm not going to food reward it because he moved. Good. So notice it takes a little while. Don't be impatient. I could hold this in front of my horse for five minutes and they still don't touch it. If you have a horse like that, stand there for five minutes until they touch it. Don't be impatient. Good. If they start doing something different, like he's trying to touch this or trying to grab it, simply stop them from doing it. So if they're doing the wrong thing like that, go no. Ignore it. Zero knows how to yawn on cue. Good. So that was an accident he touched it, but it doesn't matter if it's an accident because eventually he goes, wait a minute, every time I touch that thing, when, when you're in early days of training new behaviours too, especially with young ones who are, you know, learning brand new things, they will start to throw the book at you. They'll be like, I know how to do this and I know how to do that. Watch, look what I can do. <laughs> no, yawning is not what we want. We just want you to touch this thing. He zoned out for a minute. He's going to go this way. <laughs> that might not last very long. Good. See, be patient. He was going to sleep. He had a quick snooze there. I just wait for him to be awake again. Good. He grabbed it, but... It's okay because it's one in a few. He hasn't done it much. If he goes to do it again, I won't reward it. He's going, I think I might go straight for the biscuit because I'm unsure exactly of what it is I'm supposed to be doing. I don't want the feet movement thing. Good. It's an accident. He didn't mean to touch it. It was an accident. No. No. <laughs> he also knows how to say yes. I think if I just do that. Good. So what I did there was, because I could see there was a bit of confusion going on in his head, I changed what I'm doing just slightly. So instead of holding it where I was holding it, because he starts thinking without his yes, I moved it to the side. Good. And moving it to the side was enough for him to snap out of the up and down movement because it was in front of him, which could go good. It could go um, good. It could go into this kind of thing, which you could see he was getting confused with. So it's not his fault. He's just getting confused. He knows he's supposed to do something. He just doesn't know what. Good. So you'll notice that if they do something good, that's kind of correct, but not correct, correct? Meaning he opened his mouth and went like this, one of those times before, good. I said good, but I didn't give him a biscuit. So it's like encouragement without reinforcement. Having a bit of smooth again. Good. So you're starting to get the picture. Now the things that are important are the things you've seen me go through so far. You've seen we, we had good, we had confusion. We had where we had to change the subject. Good. We also had where he was moving his feet. We don't want that either. Not now. 
good because the lesson for today is just when you see this, you touch it with your muzzle. Good. Good. Now what's happening is what happens frequently is that he's learning and has has kind of started to understand it, but he's only understanding it when it's in a certain position. Good. When I change the position of it, he's starting to get confused. Good. So I slightly changed the position. Close to what it was, but not quite the same. Good. So I've moved it from being to the side here. Good, where you could see he's actually going, oh, I get it. Good, you can tell he's getting it because of his how quick he is to respond. So because he's good at it here, good, good. We don't want the behavior to become a zero moves ahead to the left to touch target. Because that's what that could become if that's all I ever did. And then if I ever wanted to move it over here, go, I don't know what you're talking about. Because you taught me, if I move my head to the left, good, then I get a biscuit. Good, different behaviour. You want to make sure that during the process, good, during the process they don't get stuck on one thing. Good. I tried it. I didn't go a little bit from here. I went all the way over here. Good, and he still got it. Even though he did it slightly wrong because he opened his mouth. Good. You can see that what he's got is he's got the idea. Remember, don't let him crowd you. Don't let him get too close in your space. There needs to be respect with biscuits involved. Good. Be patient. Good. Use consistency. I'm just going to drop it down. No zero. Good. Okay, so that was a test from me to him to see how much he's getting it. He's being a little bit vague and not concentrating by going to my hand instead of the target. Out of my space, zero. I could see he's opening his mouth, so I just didn't let that happen. Good. So there we had some action that was going to happen. Now there's something else that um, you do need to take, uh, be aware of, and that is some people might start com having, coming across the problem of the horse is going towards the hand instead of the target because they're trying to skip a step and go straight for the biscuit. Don't ever consistently give the biscuit from the same hand. That's what he's doing right now. You know English too, don't you, Vero? Out of my face. He's definitely trying to cheat right now. Good. Because I believe that Zero understands. No. But this is, I know him very well. This is very much good. This is very much zero personality. Zero's personality. Not zero personality. You've got a personality and a half, haven't you? <laughs> he also has, good. He also has half a blue eye on this side and you can't see that. He's so attractive. Let's turn around so people can see you. Back up, Zero. Back up. Let's get closer so people can see your eye. I'm so handsome. There. Good. There's another thing that you can try during the training process of such a thing. Good. Is make sure that you change your position of where you're standing. Good. And I don't mean don't just stand in this piece of the arena or stand over there on the grass. I mean, don't just stand in front of him and teach him that because trust me, they will put it all together and they think if you consistently just did that, they will think when you are standing here and doing this, I touch this thing, but when you stand here, no idea what you're talking about because it's different. 
good. So make sure in the early days that you do change it up good. Now, if you had some problems with getting that behavior to happen right when you move, it's only because Zero is so switched on to my system that I was able to do an extreme move from here to here that I, good. But if your horse was kind of new to the system of positive reinforcement or new to you, um, you might not be able to make such a big change from here to here. So in which case you would move from here. Good. And if they were getting it, step to the side to reward. Good. Step to the side to reward. Good. Step to the side to reward. And suddenly you've moved your position. Good. So I think that you guys are probably noticing that Zero has understood what we're doing. He has understood. Good. He just didn't understand then his level of trying that he needed to do. Back up Zero. Back up Zero. He dropped his biscuit. To test him is to move him away from me. Good. Moving him towards me is an easy one. Back up zero. Back up zero. To test him is to move it away from me. And he's going for the biscuits. Good. Now you see that he understood that. He understood I've got to touch it, but he did open his mouth. That doesn't matter because he did a good job of what he was doing. I just won't reward that consistently. Good. So therefore, he didn't open his mouth that time. So that time, it's all good. No. Good. So you can see a horse like Zero is going to be very good at fetching things and picking things up, which I haven't started with him. But because he's mouthy, good. You can see he wants to naturally grab hold of the stick. That when it comes time for that, I think zero will be a good one. Bolt, on the other hand, good. My um, painted, painted horse. Zero is a paint horse too, but he's not painted. He's paint, but he's not painted. <laughs> Except for someone painted your eye, didn't they? Um, Bolt, my painted paint horse. Good. He's not mouthy at all, so when it comes to certain tricks, there's some that are really good at some tricks and some that just aren't as good at the same kind of thing. So find what they're good at too. It's really important because we're all good at something and when we know what we're good at, it's great to get the most out of it. Good. Let's test it. See, he's he's understanding, but no zero. This is why I moved it to the side originally before, remember? Because he was getting confused with a yes shake. Good. So all I do is I still want to get the result that I was after before when I lifted it up, but what I'll do is I'll do it slowly. If he's going to get confused, I'll do that same position. Good. Good. So we're getting there. Ooh. If he'd done any more of a head shake there, I probably wouldn't have given him a biscuit, but I still can say the word good. I'd love to show you his yes shake, but what we'll do is we'll wait until we finish this little bit. Good. And I think that's a good one to end on. So there's another thing is know your horse and know how much they can handle. Some horses attention span for tricks or behaviours or whatever it is, or their attention span in general, because obviously one is completely different to the other. Some are more motivated, some are less motivated. Um, and like I said just before, some are really good at some things and some just aren't really good at some things. So make sure you keep your session to something that your horse can handle. Do not overdo it because if you overdo, if I was to stand here and continue to do this and expect him to get it completely perfect before I'm not finishing until you do, I would end up with pretty much getting nothing because he would quickly get sick of it 
even though he's a motivated, you know, um, playful kind of horse, he would quickly get sick of that. Do you think targets are a pretty cool thing to land? <laughs> he stopped before I said that G double O D. Good. So I asked him to do it again. Anyway, that is the very beginning of you teaching your horse to use a stick target. And I think we've had enough because it's time for Zero to go to bed for Yawny. Good. Good example of sometimes when you're not training, good things happen. I just squashed the target. I don't really want him to do that, but I will turn it around. And if he's happy to pick up the stick, good zero. Now, I don't know if that's even in the video, but I'm, I have to show you, and it's only because zero chose to do this. I showed him the stick end. Good. I showed him the stick end of the stick and he went to the target end of the stick. Now, if that's not showing me that he understands and he obviously thinks this is a bit more fun. No, you wanted the biscuit instead. What about that thing over there? That's the wrong bit. That's the wrong bit. Let's see if you remember. Good. Zero. That's it. That's where I'll end because I know that he wants to grab it with his teeth and we don't want something else to happen out of that meaning I don't want two behaviours in one because then all I'm going to get is confusion. <laughs> but how good's that? Sometimes they surprise you and they do something that you either didn't teach them yet or they show you that they've understood it a lot more than you thought they did. And for him to move the whole length of the stick with it on the ground and think I'm supposed to touch this bit, which is exactly what just happened, isn't it? That's exactly what happened, Blue Eye. We'll be back with more, no doubt.